The outback is a place you can never leave. It becomes a part of you. Harsh, remote, you're drawn into the beauty of its inhospitable landscape. I once lived out here, brought my family out here. Did I make the right choice? Did this environment enhance our lives? What effect did it have on my kids? Do they appreciate the natural world? Or have I created memories they'd rather forget? My son Toby and I are about to find out. For the past 20 years I've wanted to return to this place. I wanted to follow my kids back to their childhood playground. And now, to see Toby recollect the surroundings that helped shape him into the man that he is today. Nostalgia aside, our journey forms part of a much bigger story of Australia's history and the events that transpired in World War II. Corunda Downs, a secret airbase hidden deep in the outback, built to defend Australia against attack from the Japanese. And somewhere between Port Hedland and Marble Bar lies a forgotten railway that transported arms to the airbase. This is the story of Australian history. A story of our history. Twenty odd years ago, I thought it would be a great idea to retrace the old railway line from Port Hedland to Marble Bar. The railway line Combined with the secret airbase is a great bit of Aussie history that needs exploring. 20 years is a long time to think one day I will get to it. But it worked out for the better, as now Toby and I get to do it together, as adults, as father and son, as mates. If you want to leave this bit, then I'll tell you when you got it wrong. Yeah. We have a map, a compass, and a bearing where the first water point was for the old railway. Toby has a commercial pilot's license, so I know he can navigate. So we'll head back. Yep, and then that's a positive fix and we're good. Okay, lead on. My dad was a motorcyclist, I'm a motorcyclist, so there's a little chance my kids were going to escape it. as it was bringing up my underlying feelings to the surface. My elation of heading for the horizon with my son. The joy of being back in the Pilbara. Why did it take so long? Have we packed enough stuff? What if this? What if that? I guess it doesn't matter now. We'll work it out together. Find an old windmill, and I'm sure it was a siding for the old railway. But there's no sign of any rail or where it had been. Well, well, well. We've got water in today. The original line was opened in 1911 and stopped at those 10 water points along the way to keep the steam engines going.
been a really hot day. Toby and I are caught unaware and are both a little dehydrated. So we're pushing through virgin scrub to make camp for the night in the shade of a distant range. We're so parched, we need to drink a lot more water. But it's not easy when the water feels like it's coming out of a hot tap. We need to try something else to quench our thirst. Feel that. Uh, oh. Sophia. Oh. <laughs> is it worth it? Of course it is. Of course it is. Uh, here we go. Ah. Only hell, you make a cup of tea in that. I haven't done how you got to drink it. Yeah, I will. It just vigorously came out my nose. <laughs> I need to wash the dust out. <laughs> yeah. So the flies come out with it. Oh, that is warm. Toby is very much like his mother, but he and I have all the same interests. So we're like mates. And the bond we form from day one is as strong as ever. Pulling up here tonight was a nice feeling, eh? Mm. Apart from the warm piss. Funny not seeing any, anything. No people, no, no. Oh, well, uh, sort of a couple of lizards. You know me, that's why I like it. No people, no society, mm. no phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I heard that. You yeah, ain't far away. I swear they sound a bit different, Brahmins, to, to your little poncy down south Frisians. Is that the truth or is that just bull? Mm. So I've got a quandary toad, the first one of the day. Yeah. So we're going to have a crack before I put my riding gear on, even though I don't really feel the need for it. Or I'll we'll just go and see what happens. Take a crap in your riding gear and then you'll have to stand up and ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were all different ages when we moved to the Pilbara, but our outback experience started at the same time. Like a team, as well as a family. My favourite word in the English language is dad. Dad, can you teach me to drive? Dad, can you help me with this? Dad, what do you think about that? It was my favourite when the kids were growing up, and now, dad, let's do this together is equally as satisfying. If I've had any success as a father, is that my kids still want to spend their time with me as adults. As our senses tune into the empty space, it draws out our apprehensions of what lay ahead. It's not until you forget about the risks of being so remote that you can truly embrace the magic of the outback. Camels are not native to Australia. They were brought over from Afghanistan, India and the Middle East by British settlers during the 1800s. Nobody knows for sure how many there are, but their numbers have grown into the millions and they are deemed a pest in the outback. They can forage up to 70 kilometres a day, eat tonnes of cattle feed and empty water holes crucial to survival for native animals. They'd have to be wild, eh? Well, yeah. they're furious now. <laughs> So 
Maybe he's clipped a rock and deflected his wheel. He's crushed his foot under the frame of the bike. Come and sit me in the shade for a minute. Oh, yeah. Give me a sit. Yeah. All right. I'm giving you a mouth to mouth, boy. Don't fucking worry about that. Just come to make sure you're alright. It's my job. As a father. But really, I don't care. But, you know, you've got to pretend. Just in case your mother finds out. I'm a little concerned Toby's foot is broken. But it doesn't seem to be slowing him down. And there's no track over the other side of that? Well, it's real rocky and sandy and I can't see any tracks. Up there we can get up the rock a little bit and have a look over the other side but still can't see in the distance where there's tracks but mind you if the tracks like this they're hard to spot anyway yeah. because of the spin effects and stuff <laughs> Tell you what, if he doesn't stink that much, we could probably um, get a steak or two out of it. The juices are still in. Oh, jeez. Um, oh, let's go. We left the Pilbara 20 years ago after moving there when Toby was six. But I remember it like it was yesterday. And now, that little boy has become a man. In the distance, we spy a track winding up the top of a range. We look at each other, and without a word, we know we're thinking the same thing. Go round to the side or not? Nah. No, fuck no. This is the last foot you want to get, huh? Yeah, true. Jesus, would you look at that? Bloody beautiful, eh? Port Hedland exports 900 million tonnes of ore per year, mainly to China and Japan. So there's a fair chance our bikes came out of the ground not far from here. In a way, like Toby and I, 
our bikes are home to. this Toby? Oh, good enough for a swim in a tub. The question is, do we drink them hot or do we put them in the water for half an hour and have them tepid? Drink <laughs> this one hot. Put drink, the next one in the water. Drink, put the next one in the water. All right. <laughs> Jeez. Well, here we go. Another Jeez. successful day. That's Cheers, full boating. Toby. You don't get any more use to it, do you? Oh, oh. At least we got this, eh? Yeah. Even if the beer's not cold, we got the serenity. Couldn't ask for a better spot. Nah. Well, you could, but you'd be a wanker. <laughs> yeah. This is living, Barry. Yeah. Hear that? What? No one around. <sighs> Won't stay here till the sun goes down. Yeah. Gonna take that long to drink this. And then fetch and then fetch me another warm beer. few days in and we realise our water supply is low. We're still a long way from civilization, but there's plenty of water in the outback. You just gotta know where to find it. The Shire of East Pilbara is the largest shire in the world, hosting lands larger than Victoria, ACT and Tasmania combined. While this area is also rich in mining and pastoral activity, its ancient gorges, waterways and cliffs remain protected as national parks and sacred Aboriginal sites. It's an inhospitable landscape of rock and scrub during the heat of the day. The afternoon light transforms the Pilbara into a heaven on earth.
do have undies on, don't you? Yes, I do have undies on, Thank Toby. Goodness. We hang shit on each other like mates. After all, it's the Aussie thing to do. I don't mind if it's not overly hot. That'll do. We'll be like proper adventure riders and we'll just ride to the nearest cafe. <laughs> You got to got to put it on reserve. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I've never really understood the respect your elders statement, because I've seen some pretty poor behaviour by people much older than me. And it also kind of implied that younger people didn't deserve your respect, which for me was even harder to understand. My kids always had my respect and me theirs. Respect is something I've taught my kids to earn not something they would simply inherit with age. As a father, I'm proud of the man my son has become. But to know this young boy in the outback is still inside him fills my heart with indescribable joy. That's always handy knowing where you are. I reckon we'll be either that creek or that creek. Yeah. Um, probably this one you can see it's between peaks. Corona Downs is there, so I think when you're there, there's it's quite a big plateau, and then you can see a range off in the west. So we've got to go up that. Then we'll... No, we've got to go around that. We've got to go around that one. But I think we're in that range. You can see far off in the west. Twenty years ago, the road to Corunna was a four-wheel drive only track, especially in the wet. It's where Toby, as a seven-year-old, learned to drive. I think it's funny in this modern world a kid has to sit in a booster seat until they're seven. Back then, a seven-year-old was in the driver's seat. Go down past there, left, left, get onto the um, the short runway, yeah. that north south one, whatever that is, um, and then hook a right and boots it up the big runway. Fair enough, try and get a bit of lift off, eh? Yeah. Get out to the bomb dump, see what's out there. That's where old mate might have tripped over that unexploded bomb. Yeah. During World War II, this secret airbase was set up to house American Liberator bombers. Australian Squadron and American Army Air Corps flew long-range missions to bomb the Japanese shipping and base facilities. 300 men lived out here, 
mostly in tents where the day temperatures would rise above 100 degrees for 100 days or more. With the threat of snakes and getting sick from stagnant water, you'd have to share a bench seat dunny with 10 other blokes. The planes would be dormant most of the day for servicing, refuelling and restocking with a variety of bombs and ammunition. By dusk, one after another, they took turns in peeling off the runway. This is the one! Ready, go! Fully loaded, thundering at full power into the twilight sky. Some never to return. Shame about the road, but this is the real deal out here. There's nothing for bloody miles. There's river, old. This is an old airbase for crying out loud. Secret World War II airbase. Check this out. Tie down points for the planes. Oh yeah. That's a 70 year old tie down point. Wow. Jesus. I've got lots of rubbish left, but when it's classic, when it's old rubbish, if they would have bought the plane in here, these would have been higher and then camouflaged over the top. Yeah, well, there's a tie down point there because they'll just have two between the wings. Like they're the only bits getting caught by the wind. No. Shit, it would have been nice to get a plane on here. This place is the bomb. It is. <laughs> so this was. Um, this was to fight off the Shogun or the, the Emperor. Oh, from Japan. Yeah. At the same yeah. time as fighting Hitler. That's it. I, I was thinking the, the way we park the bikes in the bomb dump just goes a bit more proof that the DRs are bomb proof. Bomb, bomb, bomb proof. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so 20 years. 20 fucking years. <laughs> Goal achieved. Now what? <laughs> time for that anti-climax and mild depression. No, a few beers at the ironclad will sort that, I reckon. Oh, yeah. That one's, that one's oh, going to be a new one for me. No. Well, let me I'll, treat you. I was, I was only eight, Dad. I was still a good two years away from drinking age. <laughs> Marble bar drinking age. Why did you, uh, why I was did you crash? The, I, I was trying to keep up close. Oh, right. But I, I was on the wrong side. I didn't even see there was a track coming up. Oh. Oh, fuck. Oh. Bugger. Twisted my fucking knee around. Oh, jeez. Far out. You all right? Yeah, I'll be fine. Just pain. At least I managed to wash off a bit of speed as you were turning. Well, I heard you go whoa, whoa, so I sped up again to try and get out. Yeah. Oh, crikey. A small crash wasn't enough to dull the moment reaching the airbase. The nostalgia, the sense of pride at the achievement, and just the elation of being there all those years later was a truly magical father and son moment. But something even more special was just around the corner. Remember the time the river just yeah, down the other side I flooded remember. and came right up under the house? The river all the way from there, all the way up to the house. Yeah. And then out the front, I was walking around with a fishing rod and got a hook stuck in bloody Nana Julie's head. Shame the gate's closed. I'd really love to knock on the door and go and say hello. Well, it's not chained. Oh, yeah, I know, but it is closed. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is it, Dad. We found the end of memory lane. I think it would be wrong not to grow up in this spot. Pretty epic, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. That's a world class range just in terms yeah. of using us right there it's and own river rushing the Kungan past. River right behind it one of the world's well yeah. to me the world's greatest river ah marble bar hottest town in Australia the place we once called home
Toby was an eight-year-old once we left this place. So now we've returned as men, there's only one thing left to do. Vanilla latte or cappuccino.